Hi, it's Dr. Z. In this video, I will review the decisions made in hypothesis testing. By the end of this video, you'll be able to explain the two different decisions that researchers make in hypothesis testing. Please print the corresponding handout for this video and feel free to pause the video at any time to take notes on the handout. Hypothesis testing is the method used to test a prediction that researchers have about a certain idea or potential new treatment. For this course, hypothesis testing is a statistical procedure to decide whether the results of a study, which used a sample, supports a hypothesis about a population. In other words, researchers will need to, need to make a decision whether the study worked or not. This graph illustrates the four steps in hypothesis testing. For this video, we will focus on step four, the green Lego. This step is making a decision about whether the study worked or not. Basically, we're comparing the sample z-score, which is step three, the red Lego, to the population prediction or critical value z from step two, the blue Lego. Based on this comparison, we will make one of two decisions. We will reject the null hypothesis, or we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. There are two possible decisions that a researcher can make. The first possible decision is to reject the null hypothesis. Let's break it down into its parts to understand what this decision is really saying. Recall that the null hypothesis means that we're predicting that nothing will happen. So if we reject the null hypothesis, this is saying that we reject that nothing happened. Well, which really means something probably happened. I know it sounds awkward and confusing. This statement is kind of like a double negative where the two negatives in this case, reject and nothing, makes a positive, and that something probably happened. The words in the green box summarize what reject the null hypothesis really means. I want you to think of a stoplight where green means go. In this case, I use the color green because something probably happened. In other words, Reject the null hypothesis means that something probably happened or that the research study probably worked. Now, the second possible decision is to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So in this decision, we failed to reject that nothing happened. In this scenario, we failed to find evidence that something happened, so then it really means nothing probably happened. The words in the red box summarize what failed to reject the null hypothesis really means. Using our stoplight analogy from earlier, here, red means stop. In this case, I use the color red because nothing probably happened in the research study. Another way to look at this decision is this way. Remember that for the first decision, we define the reject the null hypothesis as something probably happened. Well, in the second decision, we're just saying that we failed to find something, so then nothing happened. In other words, to reject the null hypothesis means that nothing probably happened, or the study probably didn't work. Most students chime in right about now and ask me, Dr. Z, why can't we simply just say that we accept the research hypothesis that something happened instead of this weird double negative statement of reject the null hypothesis? That is an excellent question. In research, we can never be 100% sure that the study did work because a sample is not a perfect representation of a population. Therefore, it is safer and more 
ethical to say, we reject that nothing happened. That really means something probably happened. I also want you to think about this from another perspective. Have you ever taken a pain reliever like Tylenol to reduce pain and it didn't work? If you look at the bottle label, the brand never guarantees that the pain reliever will work 100% of the time. Because the reality is that every single person in the world is unique. And the pain reliever cannot ensure that it will work for every single possible person. The same goes for research. The research study could work for this particular sample here in the United States, but not work for another sample in a different country. Heck, the study could work right here with a sample from Arizona, but not work in a sample from New York. Phew, that was just the explanation of the two possible decisions. We now need to compare the sample z-score, which is step three, to the population prediction or critical value z from step two to make the decision. This graph illustrates what decision to make based on where the z-score for the sample in step three falls in the decision criteria, step two. Recall that step two is where you set the criteria to make a decision about whether the study worked or not. Using your significance level P and the normal curve table, you found the Z scores that correspond to the outliers or the extreme scores. These here are your critical value Z scores that set the critical region. If the Z score for the sample in step three falls in the critical region, either in this area here above the mean or this area here below the mean, then the decision is to reject the null hypothesis, which is green. In other words, the study probably worked. And more specifically, the treatment given to the sample probably had an effect. In more technical terms, we would state that the results are statistically significant. Now, since this is a normal distribution, and a normal distribution symmetrical, whatever happens on one side will also happen with the other side. Now, if the z-score for the sample in step three does not fall in the critical region, but in the middle of the graph here, then the decision is to fail to reject the null hypothesis, which is red. In other words, the study probably did not work. More specifically, the treatment given to the sample probably had no effect. And in more technical terms, <clears throat> we would state that results are not statistically significant. Now that we've reviewed the two possible decisions in hypothesis testing, are you ready to practice your new knowledge? I have two practice examples for you to review. Example number one explains that in step two, the researcher decided to conduct a two-tailed test with a 0.05 significance level. In other words, the researcher used a non-directional hypothesis. This information results in a critical region of z equals plus or minus 1.96. This is what the graph of the critical region would look like for this example. Now in step three, the researcher calculated a z equals plus three for the sample. Where on the graph would this z equals plus three fall? Well, it would fall above the mean. In this case, does the z equals plus three fall in the critical region? Yes, yes it does. So what decision should we make? We should decide to reject the null hypothesis. This decision means that the research study probably worked and the results were statistically significant. Let's try one more example, but with a twist. 
Example 2 explains that in Step 2, the researcher decided to conduct a one-tail test with a 0.01 significance level, and they will use a critical region of z equals plus 2.33. This information reveals that the researcher had a directional hypothesis in step one, and they hypothesize that there will be an increase. Therefore, the critical value for z is a plus sign instead of a minus sign. This is what the graph of the critical region would look like for this example. Now in step three, the researcher calculated a z of negative 2.45 for the sample. In other words, the sample had a decrease. So where on the graph would this z equal negative 2.45 fall? Ooh, way over here. Does the z equal negative 2.45 fall in the critical region? Nope, no it does not. So what decision should we make? We should decide to fail to reject the null hypothesis. In this case, this decision means that the research study probably did not work and the results were not statistically significant. In summary, research involves testing hypotheses using a statistical procedure in order to determine the results of a study. Making a decision on whether the research study worked or not is a major Lego building block needed to understand statistics.